<sighs> Am I the only one who really hates winter? <laughs> like, there's no motivation. There's no money. It's always cold and everything just looks so gray and desaturated and sad. I just don't like it. There's no motivation at all. I was thinking I finally had to force myself to do something. So I contacted my friends and we're about to go to an abandoned sanatorium. Yep, an abandoned sanatorium. I don't know why, we're just doing that. And there are three reasons why I want to do that. First of all is to get some dope B-roll shots, you know, to get a little bit of motivation going on. Second reason is to show you guys how to film in winter because nailing that focus and exposure mm, can be rather difficult to be honest with you. And third reason is to show you a new toy I got and that is the Zeun Weeble Lab and we're gonna be field testing it. Come on guys, you know me, I'm not gonna be sitting here for 10 minutes, I'm actually gonna be showing you some footage, some real time 4K footage, no slow motion, I promise. Well, maybe a little bit. This is what I'm talking about. Everything just looks so monotone and so desaturated. It's just, it's like I don't see contrast anywhere and I get super demotivated to do anything. But we have finally reached our destination and the first things first, what we're gonna do is just check out the location if it's, if it's worth shooting. And then let's get to the real stuff, which is the tutorial. Alright, let's get to the exposure part. If you watched my video on how to correctly expose S-Log2, I said that you need to overexpose your footage by two stops for the best results. Well, in these situations, you kinda need to break those rules. If you are exposing straight for the snow, I'd recommend overexposing by between one and one and a half stops. But if you have a specific subject in frame with a lot of dark shadows and texture, I'd recommend exposing for that subject and in order not to overexpose snow, personally, I like to keep the image overexposed by maximum one stop. Remember, it's way easier to recover shadows in post than highlights. As for the focusing, the answer is simple. Just don't use low f-stops such as 1.4 when filming landscape. Try between apertures 4 to 7 and you'll see how much sharper your image gets. If I'm doing wide shots, I'm always trying to keep my aperture between, I don't know, like f4 and f7.1. Of course, if we're in the dark situation, of course I'm gonna go like 2.8 or even 2. But this time I want the audience to see everything. So my aperture is 7.1. What this means is that everything is in focus. Plus you can move bigger distances without your subject getting out of focus, which is great. And now let's speak about Zeun's newest gimbal, Weebel Lab. Right off the bat, first thing I noticed is that it's extremely easy to imitate slider shots due to its size. It's not perfect, but I'm surprised to see the results were so smooth. Little side movements are visible here and there, but that's because I shot most of this while zoomed in 85mm. And now, with this mode, I can see what I'm recording. And without any stress on my shoulders, without any stress on my breathing, I can just do a really, really long smooth slider shot all right so here's another thing i noticed if you're in this mode these kind of movements with the gimbals are kind of tricky you know especially when you're facing the gimbal upwards and it's like sometimes they work sometimes they don't if you're using a wide angle lens usually they work fine but if you're zoomed in like 85 millimeters well i don't think this is going to work out with the first try i discovered that with the wee bill in the underslung mode, it's actually way easier to control the, what is this, panning basically. So right now I'm zoomed in 85 millimeters. You can see it's a little bit shaky because come on, it's 85 millimeters. I'm gonna try orbiting at the same time. And trust me, these shots are really tricky. Oh my God, I was trying to get a shot like that with the crane at version two. It's just not possible. I'm telling you, the underslung mode actually really, really helps. Your both arms are closer together and you can actually get another balance point from your, not chest, but like hips, yeah. So basically you have much more, you know, balanced overall system, so to speak. If you review a gimbal 
and you expect to get a smooth shot while running like this? What's wrong with you? When we got in the abandoned building, it was time to put the gimbal to the test. There wasn't a lot of space and it was all dirty and you can easily trip over things, but that didn't stop us from getting killer shots. Alright, so let's test the underslung mode one more time. I really like this old kind of wood because there's a lot of texture to it. I kind of want to do a little push-in shot where it, at first it's out of focus and then it goes in focus. These shots are extremely difficult to do with uh, gimbals, so let's see if this underslung mode will be a game changer and actually prove its worth. I like to do this multiple times, like three or four times, just to be safe. This is a lot easier. It's not exactly like a slider, but it's close. I'm getting close. I have always seen horror movies where someone is slowly walking up the stairs and the camera is kind of like, you know, following him like this. And I really want to try that effect right here because everything looks creepy. So my assistant right here is just going to be walking up the stairs and I'm going to be trying the underslung mode and going like this. Let's hope it looks cinematic. It's going to be super noisy because you know, it's completely dark, but hey, at least let's give it a go. This gimbal performs really well. I just love getting extremely close to the ground and nailing those detail shots without breaking your back. This actually allows you to get also low orbit shots, which previously was a pain with the Crane 2 and other gimbals on the market. I'm gonna be perfectly honest with you. I don't really particularly enjoy the overslung mode on this gimbal. It just feels a little bit weird. I guess it's because I'm used to the Crane 2. But what I do enjoy is shooting in the underslung mode. I think this gimbal is literally meant for this. I still have the 30 millimeter on because I love to get those texture shots. And what I want to do right now is capture that window over there. Um, but instead of doing the classical this kind of a shot, you know, the body height, I'm going to be going super low so you can feel that it's sweeping against the floor. Smoothly sweeping against the floor. Hit the rock, god damn it. <laughs> the best thing is that I can see when I'm filming. Um... The underslung mode is also really good if you, for example, wanna, let's say we wanna get these glass shards, right? Normally, if you would want to, you know, hold the gimbal like this, you would go back to the overslung mode, but I kinda like holding it like this. It just, it feels like this gimbal is connecting to my body a little bit more and the movements are a bit smoother. And yeah, as I said, I don't like the overslung mode. I'm probably not gonna be using this gimbal for the overslung modes. One kinda, I wouldn't say it's a bad thing, it's just like kinda annoying. When I try to put the gimbal in the overslung mode, it feels like this place is kinda moving a little bit. Maybe I'm not doing something correct, but yeah, that's something I don't like. I have balanced this camera perfectly and the motor strength is on low, but after using this for like one and a half hours, like it's already 50% battery. It's probably because of the cold, because it's really cold, but yeah, already 50% battery. Mm, kind of miss the crane too, battery life, you know? All of the modes do exactly what they are supposed to do, but I 
did notice that in lock mode it still drifts a little bit to the left. It's not as drastic as on the crane 2, but you can still notice it there. There's only one thing I really dislike about this gimbal. When you are in underslung mode, you have to hold the trigger to tilt up or down, and that is the most uncomfortable thing I've experienced in my life. I wish Zeon would have made a dedicated all axes follow mode, because right now getting reveal shots in the underslung mode is kind of a pain. Alright, everybody has been waiting for this. The vertex mode. Behind us there's like this huge hallway and I think it's gonna look super dope. I don't want it to be very fast, but... That is too fast. <laughs> that is way too fast. It's kind of hard to frame, but that's logical, I guess. As you saw, that was the vertex mode. Well, I'm not a big fan of it because it's kind of overused ever since the Ronin invented that. But I mean, it's there. Next thing I really want to test out is, as I said, I don't like holding the gimbal like this. I much prefer going to the underslung mode and then walking straight. But what I want to test out is I'm going to try to walk pretty fast with the gimbal like this and let's see if it kind of drifts to the left and to the right because I'm going to be putting it on the lock mode. And as I said previously, I'm going to be going quite fast. No slow motion, 4K, real time. Let's go. Okay, so putting it on lock mode. So that means when wherever I move it, it just stays on spot. Three, two, one, go. Anyway, right now we're gonna be testing out the most common shot ever. Rainus is gonna be walking forward and I'm just gonna be following him with the gimbal. Another thing which I really, really like is the portability. I have said this in my previous videos a thousand times. The most important thing for me in a gimbal is mobility and portability and this gimbal delivers both of them in an excellent way. With the crane 2, whenever I was on a shoot and I had to move from one location to another and I didn't want to set the crane 2 up every single time, I kind of had to carefully put it in the car or like rest it on my shoulder and it was always super uncomfortable. With this one you can just take it in one hand, like this. And, and you can just walk with it and you will never feel that you're getting exhausted by carrying it because it literally weighs like nothing. We need to test out one last thing. Can you guess what it is, Rainy? <laughs> Sports mode. We're gonna be doing this kind of a shot. Of course, we're gonna be using our trusty scary old hallway and I'm gonna be doing imitating like a glide cam basically. You can access the sports mode by holding down this go button. Look on the right. Keep going. Stop. Look on the left. Keep going, keep going, keep going. And now run. Now we're gonna try something different. Rainy. What do you say that instead of me operating the gimbal, I will give it to you. Since you have only held this gimbal for like, I don't know, maximum 5 to 10 seconds, I think this is going to be a great opportunity for you to tell your honest opinion about the gimbal. Where's the vortex mode? It's like, uh, it's actually called the vortex mode. Okay. Right, I'm going to try it. I never tried this. Never I'm tried try it the yet. vortex mode. Yeah, this seems like a good shot. All right, go for it. I'm not gonna, not gonna try the POV mode because I'm super excited about this. I don't have it on the version two, and I think this might be even a better, better mode than the Vortex because you can you have so much more control with this. You can control the movement. You don't have to trust only the joystick. When you do stuff with joystick, this just seems so robotic and just doesn't seem natural to me, unless you're like super, super gentle with it. But. Oh, that turned out great, I think. How did it feel? How did the movement feel? This, you, 
can't even, you don't even realize when she uses it how actually light and portable this thing is. I think you give me like one reason why to purchase this Weebill, it would be the portability. Like look how small this thing is. I mean, and it feels, it's like, you know when you sometimes hold, for example, crane too, it feels like you have a huge weight on your shoulders, but with this one, you don't even feel it. I care, I, I can stand the weight, but I care more about the actual portability and how much space this takes, because space is crucial once you start traveling. And like when you, oh, this is something I really appreciate. That double tap and when yeah, it recenters? Double tap and resets, it's, wait, where did it shut off? You turned it off by accident. Yeah, I think the power button is not in a very convenient ah, place, here. in my opinion, yeah. Could be in a better place, to be honest with you. The screen is also something I appreciate. You can see the battery. So in Crayon version 2, you have to like read these, the light like flickering. Yeah. So you, you speak all the time about the underslug mode. Yeah, you can, you can see how light it is, like an, I can hold it on one finger. Yeah. It's like... And it's just, and that means just it's balanced as well. The way it's like distributed perfectly, I like that. You know, usually when you're doing these with the other gimbals, you can't do it with one hand. But this, I can just do it with a few fingers, and it feels like it feels good. It feels light, solid at the same time. I like it. All right. So what I think about this, we build about using it for <laughs> a couple of minutes. Uh, I would change this, change my crane version 2 for this any day because if I need to like say just one reason it would be portability but all these like underslung modes and just how flexible it is, it's pretty dope. The vortex mode, I need like I need to adjust the uh, sensitivity of it but it's great. I wish that you can like use it like in this mode as well but that's what POV mode for, is for and yeah. pretty much does the same thing but you only, you know, it's just you're just limited to just the twist to a certain angle, but the, the, under, the very popular underslung mode, as you mentioned, is um, it's great. I love it. It's effortless. It's, the gimbal feels like super light and you can do shots like these, like orbiting around a small object is so much easier now because like if you're doing like a product shot for like a watch, let's say, I was trying that with a Creative Immersion 2, you can't do that because it's like with this, you can do like s these slow movements like so much better, I think. The only issue with this is, I wish that you could like do the, this kind of shot and then like pull up, but the, uh, the gimbal just doesn't let you do that. Yeah, that's, you have to hold the trigger. Zion, please add a firmware where you just click a button and you know, you can pull up and down, oh, tilt. If you can, this definitely needs some little tweaking, but uh, as a first generation product, this is amazing, I think. Time for the ultimate question. Who is this gimbal for and is it worth upgrading from the Crane 2? If you shoot real estate, music videos and corporate content, I would say not really. However, if you care about mobility and portability and travel a lot or want your setup to be as light as possible, I cannot even describe you how good it feels to lose almost 75% of the weight from the crane too and to be able to carry this around even in your hands without really feeling it. For me, that is the biggest game changer. And even though I will be still using the Crane 2, the Weeble Lab has become my main travel gimbal. All right guys, thank you so much for watching. We really wanted to make this review a little bit different and went to a place where we have never made the video before basically. And yeah, I think this was a really cool experience because well, we went out of our comfort zones, yeah? This wasn't easy at all. <laughs> yeah, it was kind of terrifying. But anyway, if you want to see more videos, hit that like button, subscribe, and please comment. Really, I really appreciate it. It makes my day. As I said, I hate winter. It makes my winter a lot better. Anyway, Crane 3 is coming up, and we're going to be making another review of the Crane 3, so stay tuned. Peace! Peace!